Hi there, it's Jeanette from my home studio in Far Forest Ceramics and this is video number one starting my journey into making my own glazes. Never done this before, don't even know the terminology, don't really know hardly anything but I've been using Mako pre-mixed glazes, brush on glazes and Amoco just started to and I absolutely love them. I'm getting some really great results with them, which is a surprise for me because I've only been doing pottery just over two, two and a half years as a total novice. Loving the results, but I'm also fascinated with making your own glazes. One of my loves is procedures, systems, organisation, testing, analysis, Excel spreadsheets. I know it's a little bit crazy, but that's what I like to do. And this almost goes down that route. I hated chemistry at school, but this is not chemistry to me. This is fun. So maybe I might end up getting into a bit of chemistry. Who knows? There is nowhere near me that does courses. So it's about an hour away is the closest I can get. So I'm having to do an awful lot of this on YouTube searching. So if you want to join the journey with me, you're in the right place. But it is going to be basics, absolute basics. If you're on the same journey and you've got some tips to share, we'd love to hear them. And if you know what you're doing and you're help, able to help out, even better. But I'm going to show you where I started and my starting point and I'll add any links below. So my source of inspiration has to be Joe from Old Forge Creations in the UK. I'm based in the UK as well. Um, his explanation, his videos and then the data he has put on Glazy um, for you to access to help you is just phenomenal. So my first point was I actually printed out a load of things off Joe's um, source of media. So the one thing he talks about is his first five ingredients. If you get the first five ingredients plus colorants, you can then make a multitude of glazes because I didn't know where to start. So I read all his information about the first five ingredients and then I created my shopping list. But what I went and did then, I went onto his glazy site and I have printed out every recipe which he creates for every single um, glaze he makes with all the percentages of what needs to go into it. But he's got a section that is all to do with the first five, the first five he calls them. Um, if I get those five ingredients, then I got all the colorants, I could make a number of glazes. So I printed those all out. There's 26 glazes that I really like that are coming from his first five. So I've got in here 26 different recipes, which also very nicely has the little images on them as well. But then from that, I created, which is very much me all over, a spreadsheet <laughs> of the first five and how much I'd need for each of the tests, plus all of the extra colorants that you might need. That then gave me my base shopping list that I wanted to go out and try and source. He suggested going to a company in the UK, which is called Pottery Graphs. And what I love about Pottery Graphs, when all the items came, they're all in nice little tubs, sealable tops, um, which are really good to be able to store on the shelf. I've got about another three of the large tubs, bigger than these, and then these different pots in different sizes. So this section basically here is from Pottery Crafts. I was missing some of them um, out of stock in Pottery Crafts that were on my base list. So I then went to Bath Potters who are also a fantastic supplier in the UK. But Bath Potters has come in little bags. So what I wanna try and do is get some tubs that I can transfer them to. because I think it's gonna be a lot easier to work out of tubs than it is bags. But all my ingredients, the more expensive ones were fortunately ones you didn't need large percentages of. Um, so I will actually calculate just how much I've spent on my first setup in Sterling to give you an idea. And I'll put that in the details of the YouTube. The other thing that Joe um, talks you through is his process of creating his glazes. So he starts off by doing a test of 100 ml of water plus the various ingredients. So his suggestion was to buy these beakers from a company he suggested in the UK called Wilco. But the link unfortunately that he suggested it no longer is available those products. I think the company's going out of business so they've all been sold off. But I found an alternative. So they literally are 400 ml containers um, and with a seal on the inside. This has got a seal, but I'm not sure how tight it's going to be. Um, so we need to see. So I've just bought 20 to start off with. Um, just took all the labels off them. So that is what you make your test in. And then from that test, if you're happy with the results, then obviously you make up large quantities. 
or if you're not happy with that test you can adjust it slightly but you're all the time tracking what you've done what you've adjusted to get the desired results so i've got about 20 of those which i'm really pleased about the other thing he said to get was a stick blender immersion blender i looked at the one in the kitchen and i thought no come on i want one for my own so i've just purchased this one off amazon but the first set of pots i bought um were 300 mil because that's the first ones i could find but then my immersion head would not fit inside the pot so this pot you're supposed to make you glaze in about 100 this is a 400 mil container so obviously 100 mil is going to be about here and then the method of mixing it which does affect the outcome you use the stick blender so that head needs to fit inside there initially i could only find 300 mil this didn't fit in I then tried to find a smaller head on Immersion Blender and I have searched everywhere. This is the standard size. So then eventually, after much more searching, I found 400 mil. They just arrived a couple of days ago. I've exchanged them for the other ones. And these are the perfect size that fit completely my Immersion Stick. So definitely only go for 400 mil if you're going to go down this route. So these are going to be the test pots. And again, what I want to do now, I've got a spare bit of wall in my home studio. I'm going to get some shelves put up so that once I've got these made up, I can put my labels on and I can stack them all on the wall for um, organisation. I've got a little cupboard at the back that I'm going to put my powders and um, chemicals in at the back as well out of way and I've got a workbench that I'm sat on I've got underneath here I've got some rooms of some buckets the one thing I'm pleased about for my testing process this is pretty much apart from an extra couple of tubs this is pretty much enough for me to test 26 different glazes um so it's a bit of a concern having space for the glazes when you've made them, but I've just got to be a little bit more efficient under my worktop, I think. So I'm not having much of a problem with that. Um, I'm just keen to have a go at the testing. When he's done his tests in these, he then uses these little steri pots for dipping his glazes. So these are dipping glazes, um, but you need to do a test tile. So what I've got to do in my first project today is I've got to make some test tiles. I normally make them with a slab roller. Um, let me show you here. This is normally the type of test tile that I make. I make them with a slab roller um, with a hole at the bottom, the number on it, some texture on one side and nothing on the other side. So I can use two sides of the test tile to get a, a result. But then what I do is I don't secure this base very well to the upright on purpose because I will now just literally get a hammer tap that off smooth off the end and then all of these I hang with that hole on string on a wall which you might be able to see me I've got a test tile wall of all my little test tiles so this works really well but these are quite wide now this is not going to fit inside here so I've got to make some new test tiles and Joe makes them on the wheel I've tried two years ago, didn't have much success. So I'm gonna have a go at making them on the wheel. If they don't work on the wheel, I'll make them with this technique. But the idea being is the tile that you're gonna test it on once you've made your glaze, you're gonna use this because this is only going to be this deep, 100 mil plus a bit of powders. This is a 400 mil pot. So about a quarter of this is gonna have your test glaze. Well, if I try to dip this in, I'm only going to get a tiny bit of glaze on my tile. So, these are little um, steri feed bottles, baby bottles, um, that again, I'll put the link on, that bought off Amazon. So he takes this and he pours into here, I think it was 50 mil, when I get to that point, you'll know, because I'll be working to his instructions, um, into here. And then when you put the test tile in, so you tip it over, dip it in, I think it's for five seconds, um, it then disperses the glaze up so you get like about that much coverage onto a test tile, which is brilliant because you're only using a small amount of um, glaze in here. Um, and you've got pretty much four goes at testing that glaze if you want to adjust the, um, the mixture. So I've got 10 of these, which is more than enough because you wash these after each one, but I've got to make some test tiles now that is not going to be wider than that diameter on there. So that's my first thing I've got to do today. Um, the other thing that I purchased was a lawn sieve. Now this is the smallest I could find. This was from Pottery Crafts. I think it was the one that Joe linked as well, which is great. And this is when you're mixing your glaze, you have to sieve it a couple of times because there's 
one chemical, I think it begins with a B, bent, bent, that one, bentonite, bentonite. I can't even remember off the names yet. It clumps apparently, and if it's not dispersed, it will go down to the bottom, so you've really got to sieve it apparently. Um, so this needs to fit over here. So on the 300 mil, again, this was way too big, but the 400 mil beaker, this fits really snug. However, what this is doing at the moment is fitting to, I don't know if you can see, the outer rim, not the inner rim. So when that is on there, there is actually, from the sieve here, there is about a three mil gap all round the rim of here. So if I put this on here, put my liquid in and I push it through, there is a three mil gap around the outside that's gonna go in that recess there, which when I take the sieve off, that's all gonna pour off. So what I need to do is I've got to just get, find some method, plastic or something or other of a collar that I can put on here that will then fit do you know do you know what I mean? Where this outer rim is just in that gap so that when I put that on, which is snug and tight, and I sieve, it's not going to collect in that bit. So that's the other thing I've got to find. But apart from that, everything is fitting great. Um, so yeah, that's my first stage. This is what I've purchased. Um, I think it's in the region of about £200. I didn't need to buy a mask, which is extremely important. I've already got a mask um, for when you're working with the dust, with the, um, the, the dry ingredients. Um, I think that's all I need to start off with, plus my trusty printouts from Joe's site. And then we're going to have a go at testing. So I'm really excited to do this. I'm, I'm a bit anxious, not anxious, I'm a bit impatient because I haven't got any test tiles ready. But that's my first stage. Have a go at throwing them on the wheel, see if I can get them um, thrown quicker than I do when I slab roll. If I can't do them on the wheel to my, you know, what satisfaction, shall we say? Because I want to also be able to snap them off so they can still go on my wall, which Joe's does them like that. And after he's thrown like a collar on the wheel, he then puts a groove in near the bottom, which then makes it easy to snap off the base. Um, and I'm thinking I can put my hole in afterwards. So I'm going to give it a go. And uh, yeah, I'll let you know how I go on. I'll track it with a video and next part of the journey. So yeah, if you're interested in Racco or glaze making as a total, be and I'm on about total beginner. I'm trying to learn the terminology as well. Um, I'd love you to join me on the journey. Obviously, I'm still going to be continuing with my pottery and making pieces, but that's mainly on my Instagram um, because I've only got 90 seconds. I can't talk as long on there. <laughs> which is maybe a good idea. So yeah, lovely to see you all. Well, speak to you all and um, hopefully catch up with you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.